Welcome back to the Hockey Show, and today we're talking about game number four between the Florida Panthers and the Boston Bruins, where the Panthers escape and take the lead even further. They escape being tied up, and they get a 3-1 to one series, and oh, this is too familiar of a number for the Boston Bruins. This is this has been a scary number for them, and they have never been on the good outcome of it all. Well, I guess they were against Toronto, so I'm an idiot, but whatever. Anyways, Florida wins it 3-2, to two, taking the series 3-1 to one after a two-goal comeback from behind. And the Bruins, I don't know what else to say. Like, this was their game to come back, right? Like, this was their opportunity. Like, they had like they had them, right? The first period wasn't truly, like, the Bruins, but they start out with some fire, right? They got on the ice, they were going, they were attacking our that McAvoy hit, like, that really put some juice in their step, right? But... They and they get the two goals in the first period with Pasta on the power pay, Carlo as well. Like they get those first two goals going, and they're like, "Yeah, we're buzzing. We're going right now. We're the black and yellow. We're the bees out here. Like we're gonna go out here. We're gonna swarm them, right? Like the Utah's new name, apparently. Like they had that opportunity to take them down this game. They just had to close. The, I mean, they were two nothing, right? All they had to do is kind of just coast it in. And win, and look at this. This game was three to two, right? Like they all they needed was like that one more goal. They could have won three to two, right? But they can't. As the Florida Panthers, they just they do what they do best. They come back and they just keep. They, they're too much. They're too much for the Bruins to handle at this point, right? And I I love like. I've been, I've been like so back and forth and like spitting chicklets and biz and like the commentators and stuff, but biz lately in the last couple of uh, intermissions has been golden. And he, what he said about how the Boston Bruins were being weak around the, the edge of the ice where the, those puck battles happen. The Florida Panthers have been winning those. And for a team like the Bruins where their big thing is like, yeah, we're the bees. We're, we're brutal. We're big. We're strong. We're, we're tough. You know, like that is just, they're, they're losing that war. To the Panthers, right? And if you're if the team that is that it's supposed to be like their strong suit against a team like the the Toronto Maple Leafs, like that, sure, like the Bruins are gonna win that and they're gonna try to punch you in the face and win. But they're losing that battle to the Panthers. And if they lose that battle, there's not much else that the Bruins can really beat the Panthers at. When it comes to like skilled offense, the Panthers are gonna beat them there with Verhage and Barkov and Reinhardt and Kachuk. Like Mar especially with Marshan out of the lineup, like they're not gonna win them with like speed and like skilled offense. When it comes to like big hits and stuff, like if they're gonna lose those like the physical war, like that is the Bruins' strong suit, and they're gonna lose it right now. And if they lose that, like, I mean, it's it that is what has happened though. The Bruins, the Cats have broke the Bruins, right? They poked the bear and then they broke the bear. And, like, I, it, it's been incredible to watch. And the one thing I want to talk about is Sam Bennett, right? I know I love how they talked to him in, uh, on the uh, after the game. And it, it, he's, like, it's a funny situation. So, to me, Sam Bennett is definitely a player with a history, right? But at the same time, he is a player with a history because he is a tough, like, like in-your-face kind of player, right? And for those people, and before I talk about his goal... For people on, like, the internet commenting about, like, how if this was the Bruins, like, they would, if this is Marshan, they would have thrown him out. Sam Bennett is just as, like, bad. Or maybe not just as bad, but he's, like, as, like, you know, he has a record like Marshan has. And, uh, to me, to me, okay, his hit on Marshan, right? First of all, like, the from a referee's angle, like, he wouldn't have seen what actually happened, right? Like, he wouldn't have seen the punch to the face. But to me, is that a punch to the face? At that speed, I do think, was he probably going for the hit to the head, sort of? I would say yes, but also, Martian is, like, it's not like Martian also wasn't trying to be a little dirtier there, right? By the benches where he's, like, right there, like, he's going in for, like, the late hit, you know? Like, he's also trying to mess around, too. And to me, it's just, like, it's two guys with bad intentions going after each other. And to me as well, is Sam Bennett's, like, what, six foot, maybe six one, like, he, uh, maybe he's even bigger than I, I can't tell you. But I know Martian is, is one of the smaller players, right? 
and the size difference there, right, with Martian, like, being, like, here compared to him, right, like, if his hands, like, he's going in to, to block, you know, like, to, to take the hit, and the way Martian coming in at him was, like, in front, like, it's a weird angle, it's not shoulder on shoulder, it was, like, Martian, like, from the side going to chest, the way he's gonna block that is put his arms here, and that is going to, and he's going in for the hit, and they're both moving forward, right, so if they're skating this way, he's moving in this way, and his hand is gonna easily, and I think, sure, at the same time does Bennett probably go at the same time like oh I'm gonna hit him in the head too probably but at the same time Martian put himself in a bad spot where a guy's gonna put his hands up to block himself and the follow-through of blocking because Bennett's a strong guy it's not just like some random player either you know it's not like like Ryan Lomberg who's gonna probably take the hit and get stumbled a little bit right this is Sam Bennett he's a he's a known strong guy of the maybe not strong guys like Brent Burns but like strong guys in like you know he's a gritty in the in the crease area kind of guy win those puck battles like he's a strong player and Martian isn't really the strongest player so he's gonna come through and the follow-through of Bennett gonna win that checking contest in all of it lines up for Bennett to hit him in the head no matter what and I do I think he it purposely went for a more of a malicious hit sure but so was Marshand you know so was Marshand and I think he puts himself in a bad position and for the Bennett goal today or I guess last night I personally think that it is a good goal, and I think Montgomery, his what his statements were after the game of if Coyle stood his ground, I think that goes to show for the rest of this whole game going for them, right? The the Bruins have been weak on the puck, right? And that's just the the sim simplicity of it. When they're not like when Coyle, like Coyle is just an interesting context context conversation where uh, he has that uh, game two where he uh, or was it game three? I don't remember when he goes in after Aaron Ekblad and he's he's forechecking him makes him make the mistake where they get Marche in the goal where he does the little hop over the guy pass the puck back to 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 Zaka for the coil goal like that incredible play that was them being strong on the puck strong on the play but Coyle in this situation, in this game, and the rest of the Bruins squad is that they're not winning these 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 battles, these net front battles, right? And Coyle, he's just standing there, right? And he is moving towards the goalie, and Bennett comes in, and I like if you've ever like I think for a lot of people who watch hockey have never actually played hockey, but when you're out there and a guy like easily shoves you, like especially like if you're moving forward like you see it all the time where guys skating towards the net and then just a little shove like that little shove it just like does so much to to your momentum because on skates like you know like like uh like you can use a leaf blower right you can use that as an engine hold that and it'll blow you forward right imagine that and you're not moving imagine skating forward and a guy behind you another pro athlete is there also giving you a little shove that is going to do a lot where coil and it's not like bennett completely like boom and like he was like whoa and fell on top of Swayman it was a move it was a shove forward where Coyle moves forward he goes he is not expecting that runs into Swayman falls over on him and to me it's just like it, it, it is a hockey play it is a hockey play and to me I think it is a fine goal it is a it's and it's just like it's once again where it's the Bruins are not sitting them upright like and and for Coyle there, like, I don't, he, like, he is a tough situation, because on one hand, he has Bennett, who's standing behind him, so he is, like, in his way, but it's, and he also wants to clear the puck away from the net, but at the same time, like, he should be tangling up, I don't know, it, it's a hard play for, to watch, and to me, it's a good goal, I think Coyle should have been able to stand his ground a little bit better than that, and I do think, like, I mean, it, well, how many times does the game happen where, like, the... Because do I think Bennett's plan was to push him into the goalie? No. I think his plan was to push him out of the way to give him a better spot to be more open if the puck got to him, which it did. Because if this happens anywhere else on the ice, right? If this happened along the boards and the puck's coming at him and he goes, like, shove him a little bit and Coyle's like, oh, into the board and then Bennett's able to take the puck... No one would be like, oh, interference or something like that. Everyone would be like, oh, you just, you know, he won the play. It, I don't know. To me, it's a good goal. And to me, the, the, the worst part about it is that it's the same thing that reminds me of the Vegas Golden Knights when there was the whole Pavelski penalty. Because it's like, at the same time, sure, it's like that happens. But the Bruins were still letting the Panthers walk all over them, right? To me, this goal was going to be inevitable. And with the amount of penalties that the Bruins were taking towards the end of the game... 
and like then the Barkov goal as well, just how they, they didn't they didn't let him, but the way he just like is able to walk in and sweep through the guys and get the shot on net, like it's just thing after thing where it's like the Bruins, it was inevitable, right? It was either gonna be Bennett's goal and they take it off the board, they would have just gone down the ice and gotten another one, right? And it just felt like the Bruins can't contain the Cats, and the Bruins, like, they fought tonight. They fought early on, but they just give up, and it's the same situation as game one or uh, two or three, whichever one I can't remember what it was now, where uh, they, oh, it was definitely two, where they, they bring the fight early, and it's just they can't close the deal. They get broken by the Cats, and they can't compete, but... I don't know. I'm completely wrong. You tell me down below how wrong I am and tell me how much of an idiot that I don't know what I'm talking about down below about this goal because maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. But anyways, that is all I got to say. So thank you for watching this. You made it this far. Please, I'm begging you, please subscribe. And thank you for watching this. Too sweet. Have an amazing day and ta-ta for now. Uh...